Now we are closing this series. And every closing or every ending should be happy. Everybody loves to have a happy ending. I want to have a happy ending. No, nobody in this world decides to have a bad ending in, in everything that we do, especially in life. Now, when you talk about happy ending, you're usually talking to a romantic story. A uh, 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 fair tale about, yes, probably Disney, we give us this picture of a very happy ending, or like they say, and they were happy ever after, right? But we, as we know in this world, we don't have this happy ending in our life because we are living in a sinful world, because we are living in a world that we are not in control. And we cannot control the end of our life, and we cannot control the end of our work, our studies, our day. Every day you have this moment in your life that you will set for your bed, and you say, okay, what was this day? And you can say, well, I finished this day happy, or I did finish this day unhappy. So when you put an ending period in your daily life, how do you evaluate yourself? It was your happy day, or it was your unhappy day? Every people in this world, they are pursuing for a happy ending. Without happy ending, people, they don't have reason for start a new day again. As I once said here about one pastor who was sharing this story, he was actually one of my first pastors in Korea when I was attending a church in Puchon in Gyeonggi-do. He said that he loved to have a coffee. I also like to have coffee. And he loved to have a black coffee. And when he have a black coffee, usually in Korea, people, they, sometimes they, 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 they put sugar or mix coffee on it. But this pastor, he liked black coffee and he put sugar on that coffee, but intentionally in his mouth, he didn't mix the sugar with the coffee. He just let the sugar go down to the bottom of the mug. Then he get the coffee, and drop by drop, he tried to enjoy the coffee. But as his friends, other pastors were watching him, saying, what did you do? Why you don't mix the sugar with your coffee? You will have a bitter one if you just do like that. He said, yes, probably I would have a bitter coffee in the beginning. But at the end of my coffee, I will have a happy ending. I will have a sweet ending. Yes, and life is like that. We think that, yes, life is bitter. And we try to enjoy our time like we try to enjoy a cup of coffee. But we don't know that, yes, if we put the sugar in our life, the sweetness of our life that comes not from us, but comes from heaven, we're definitely going to have a happy ending at the finish line. But we cannot see this happy ending in the process. We are still having a, a try to enjoy this bitter coffee. And we don't have the power to mix the sweetness by ourselves. It's just a blessing. It's just a, a, a birth that comes from heaven. But it's promised that at the end, we're going to enjoy, enjoy the sweetness of God's kingdom here in earth and also in heaven. We all want to finish our day in a happy way. Now, we know that the promise of God is, as we read the scripture today, that we're going to have a happy ending, yes, in heaven. But actually, we, can, we don't need to wait until we finish our life to enjoy this happy life. Or eternity as happy as we want. If you want a happy ending, that depends, of course, on where you stop your story. You can stop your story in heaven, when you arrive there, as God promises, or you can stop your story tonight. Or you can st stop your story right after this service. The point is, are you enjoying every moment, every chapter of your story, and every chapter finished with a happy ending? I mean, I hope that all of you will come happy after this sermon <laughs> and enjoy this time as I enjoy it. Of course, as a pastor, I enjoy to preach. I don't know if you are enjoying to listen. <laughs> How can you qualify your days, your moments in your life as a happy moment of your life? Every, every person life to, to stand and, 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 and delay the end of, of your happiness. You don't want that when you are happy, that time finish. You want to remain this, in this happiness forever. But since we are not yet in heaven, you cannot let your happy time endure forever. 
Why? Because we are still in this world. It was when Peter and John was taken to the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus that they saw Elijah and they saw Moses there in the mountain and, and it was Peter, you know Peter. He just opened the mouth without thinking. He just said, Lord, it was good to be here. Let me bring and, and, and make a tent for you, for Moses and for Elijah so we can have a happy time here. But Moses and Elijah disappeared and only Jesus remained and the voice of, the voice of God was telling and testifying, this is my loving song that you should listen. And the Lord said to Peter, no, Peter, this is no time for the happy ending. We are still have a work to do. Let's go down to the mountain and serve the people of God. We could enjoy every moment in our life if we focus that God is with us. But we cannot stand this happiness forever. It will be time that we have to work. It will be time that we're going to have hard time. And it will be time that we're going to be persecuted. We're going to be accused. We're going to be tempted. We're going to war or study without enjoying the moment. But it's how we stop every chapter, every paragraph of our story with a happy ending. God only makes happy endings. If it's not happy, then it's not the end. It's only God who can put a final period in your life. It's only God who can put that admiration symbol in your world happy or in your world end. Because it is He who knows what is the end of everything. We can just put a period who follow the next paragraph. But God will put a final period that will end the story of your life. Until that time happens, let's enjoy every moment. Let's enjoy every day. Let's enjoy everything that we have here in life. You can ask to every elder in any culture, in any language, in, every, in any country, that what would they would like to do if they had the opportunity to go back to their past. They would say, if I had the opportunity to, to go back to, me, to my past, I would do everything again. Instead of regret for not enjoying every moment, for not enjoying every chapter of their life. We just let the days pass without enjoying it. And God wants us to be happy, to enjoy every moment, to enjoy every blessing, until we reach to heaven and become finally like Him. That's why as we review our study of the Beatitudes, remember that we are here to go to this pilgrim progress life until we reach the eternal kingdom of God in heaven. Seeking faith, repenting, submitting our life, be filled with the Holy Spirit, sanctifies and seeing God, sharing the gospel and endure even persecution. Because if we do that, we're going to be happy. We're going to be blessed as God promised. For every journey, every step of our Christian life, have a promise of blessing, have a promise of happiness, have a promise to be with God and be more like God. That's what he said, blessed are the poor in the spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who are meat, blessed are those who, who, who also are hungry and thirsty, blessed are those who are merciful, blessed are those who are pure in heart, and blessed are those who are peacemakers. And finally, as we read today the scripture, blessed are those who are persecuted, because great is the reward in heaven. Scripture said literally as we just read today in Matthew chapter 5, 11 and 12. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. Happy or blessed are you, said Jesus. Rejoice and be glad when we, as said here, are persecuted, insulted, false accuses, and receive all kinds of evil sins. Can you say that this is a happy ending? That this is a happy day? If we were not fully filled with the Holy Spirit, we were not assured of our salvation, if we were not loving God with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our soul, we probably would say no, never we're going to enjoy happiness in this way. But that's what exactly God wants us to teach us. To enjoy even persecution, to enjoy even when we are false accused, and all kinds of evil sins. Because great will be our reward in heaven. Here in, in Korea, we are not experiencing violent oppression. But probably you are here experiencing silent oppression. We are not persecuted as Christians like other 
countries are per being persecuting Christians like we see in the news these days, even now in Europe. But here in Korea, we don't have that kind of persecution. But what you have here in Korea is a silent pressure. You are pressed and stressed every day quietly. That nobody notices that you are persecuted, but yes, you can feel it if you are seeking righteousness. If you are seeking the kingdom of God, you will feel this pressure on you. You will suffer. But you have to understand what kind of suffering you are experiencing. Because you can have a common suffering, like this day says, you can live, just pray, we are all suffering because of the weather. We can suffer in a common way for many things. We can suffer because of the weather, we can suffer because of calamities, we can suffer because of, 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 of this war is in, in, in chaos. But also we can suffer because of our own decisions, that is called the carnal suffering. And we are suffering because we are here in this war making mistakes in our decisions, disobeying God's commandments. And because of that, we are suffering. I mean, we sometimes make stupid sins to bring suffering to our life. We can control our bodies, sleep well, have a proper meal, proper sleep, and have healthy food, and have a healthy life, or we can put a lot of junk food in on us, don't do any kind of exercise, just be exposed of every, everything that contaminates our body, and then when we get cancer, we cannot say that God is cursing us. It was just our mistake. It's our, just our own decision to put all these bad things on us. And not only physically, but also mentally, psychologically, emotionally in us. It's our decision, and we cannot even blame Satan and say, oh, it was the fault of, of, of Satan that I'm in this disgrace now. We own decisions, our own decisions brought this disgrace to us. So this is what we call the carnal suffering. But Christian suffering is different. Christian suffering is because you are pursuing righteousness, because you are seeking the kingdom of God, and you are trying to show to the world the virtues of the kingdom of God, truth, love, servanthood, faithfulness, justice, so that you can live a different life. And that's why make you different from the other people in this world, and the people will notice that you are different. And they will persecute you because they cannot meet your standards of righteousness, and they will try to pull you down. That is the kind of suffering that we are talking about. That's the kind of pressure that we are talking about. You will be feeling the impression that, yes, if you are always telling the truth and everybody's lying in your company, they will persecute you for no lying like that. They will say, well, we are all making this excuse. They call it excuse what is, what is in truth a lie in order to save themselves. And, they, and just know that that's not right. That's not the truth. And you feel in your heart and you feel in your, in, in your mind that this is not right. And you want to speak the truth and then there will be the pressure there that will try to force you to tell lies. That's the kind of persecution I'm talking about. You are not here to, to, to worry about that you, after this service there will be a, 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 a terrorist attack in front of this church and you're going to be blown away from this war. But you're going to feel the persecution in your company tomorrow or even today when you go back home between your relatives and families who are not Christians. And you're going to be in your schools tomorrow facing that, yes, this war are confronting you with theories, with lies, with inventions that they cannot prove. And it requires more faith to believe what they say than what the Bible said about God and everything that the Bible teaches. We have to make difference of what kind of sufferings are we experiencing these days. And don't just say that, oh yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and that's why I'm, I'm happy. No. You are not celebrating that you are sick or you are in disgrace because of your mistake. You are not celebrating that you, 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 you are in the middle of the, the traffic jam or you are in the middle of, of, of uh, lack of electricity or, or water in, in your neighborhood because of this, this, this war that is in chaos. And you don't say, oh, I'm happy. No, no, we don't do that. We are not masochists. We are not hypocrites. We complain like everybody complains. We endure what we can endure. But God is rewarding the endures that come from suffering as Christians, as pursuing the kingdom of God and his righteousness. No other things, like we said the last week, not because of a, of, of, of a cause, not because we try to be noble or good or self-sacrifice, but because we defend the truth and the principles of the kingdom of God. One of the way we can handle opposition is first. Don't be surprised. 
The Bible said in 1 Peter 4.12 that, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. So when you are suffering as a Christian, don't be surprised. Second, don't be afraid to. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, 14 to 16, But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, do not be frightened, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer for everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have, but, you, but do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience that, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed under slander. This is the kind of persecution we're talking about. And don't be afraid if you are persecuted for these reasons. Also, do not be ashamed. 1 Peter 4, 16 said, However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Fourth, recognize the source of your persecution, that is Satan. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark war, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We have to understand that, yes, we are not fighting against this person, this friend, this relative, this family member, but we are fighting against Satan, the evil spirit that is working behind them. God loves you and has a wonderful plan for you. That's what we learn in the, the first law, all the, spiritual, the four spiritual laws. But uh, we can paraphrase in the same way about Satan. God loves you and has a wonderful plan for, for you, but Satan hates you and has a bad plan for you. So we have to be aware that if we are real Christians, if we are seeking righteousness and the kingdom of God, definitely we're going to be the enemies of the devil. We're going to be the, the enemies of Satan. And we have to be ready to put the armor of God and fight the good fight of faith. Number five, we have to refuse to retaliate. Romans 12, 17 and 19 said, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. For be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For his reading, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. So we are not here to revenge ourselves. We are not here to fight back. But in, in other way, we have to even love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, as the Lord said. Number six, respond with a blessing. Respond with a blessing. Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Luke 6, 27, 29 said, but I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless, to, bless who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on the cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloth, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Now, is this possible? <laughs> Our natural flesh said no. Never. You will ask me, I'm a pastor, say, no. I cannot do that. But I will try. But I will try. In my flesh, I cannot do that. But I will try. So, whenever I have a circumstances that I see something that is unusual and, and I be exposed to show my flesh, my kernels, behaviors, I pray always to God in this way. God, let everything happen to me, but not to my children. Let everybody touch me, but not touch my children. Because I can endure if somebody hit me here, and I, pull, I can pull my other side of my faith, but if somebody hit my kids, that's a different story. If somebody says something about my wife, that's a different story. I can endure whatever people do to me or say about me, but I cannot endure. If you touch my family, if you touch my kids, if you touch my wife, that's sacred for me. And I pray, God, don't put me, don't let me fall in that temptation. Because I know my nature. And we know our weakness. But God's commandment is, yes, to bless those who persecute us, to love our enemies, and to even let them take what belongs to us. Sounds impossible, but yes, God's command is that. And we're going to talk about it later when we study the Sermon of the Mount, the rest of the Sermon of the Mount. So what I want to say is to focus 
on what God wants instead of focus on what people want. In this world, people, they think that, yes, this is the way that you should live, so you're going to be happy. Because if we are happy, you're going to be happy. I mean, if we accept you, you're going to be happy. You don't want us to isolate you. You don't want us to separate you from our society. That's what the condition of the world says. And then you try to please the world instead to endure persecution, endure isolation because of your righteousness that God gives to you. And then you just give up the kingdom of heaven. God wants us to focus on what God wants from us and what God wants us to do rather than what the world wants from us and what the world wants us to do. Second Timothy 2, 23 and 25 said, Do not have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. To those who oppose him, he must gently instruct in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to an knowledge of the truth. We don't fight back, but we are able and ready to show to the world what is the truth and what's God's plan for the people. We are not fighting. I, the, the, this war fight from us. And as I say to this, the kids in this morning, our fight belongs, our battle belongs to the world. To, sorry, to, to God. He is the winner. He is the one who fights our good fight. And he is the one who guarantees us victory just because we have faith. We just have to resist the devil. As Peter says in 5.9, resist him, stand in fear in the, in the faith because you know that your brothers through doubt the war are undergoing the same kind of suffering. It is better, says Peter in chapter 317, if it's God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Now, the question is, why we have to do that? Why we have to suffer? Why is a blessing of suffering? I mean, why we have to suffer in order to be happy? The Bible says if you are suffering, you're going to be rewarded. But more than that, Today, in your present day, you can have a happy ending this day because you are, suf you are suffering or you are persecuting. And that's the proof. First, as Martin Jones joins in his study of the Sermon on the Mountain, that you are a real Christian. And second, that you are more like God. That's why you can rejoice, be glad, and be happy today. That you are more close to heaven. You are more like Jesus every day. And you are a truly child of God. That's the very reason to rejoice today. Have you been born again? Have you received this Holy Spirit as a Baptist in your spiritual journey? Have you started a new life in Christ? Maybe this is the day. Maybe it's today. That you can receive the Holy Spirit and start a happy story in your life. You can put every period, in every paragraph, in every chapter of your life. But God guarantees you, guarantees you that at the end of your life, when he put the final period, you will have a happy ending. You will end your life happy and rewarded and enjoy him forever. Do you want to receive him? Do you want to accept him as your Lord, as your Savior? I will ask you to bow down your heads and pray with me this simple prayer.